Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're getting back into Strange, and with doing so, we're finally getting the answers to the reason why Wong has these missing memories about the things that he should know in relation to the Blasphemy Cartel. So with that said, let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch us bills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so for this one, we begin with finding ourselves getting back into the mystery of the Blasphemy Cartel, who had initially came off as a magic-wielding terrorist group. And I mean, even still, I would say that's about right. But with everything that Clea has been looking into and also sharing with Wong, he can't help but to think that he should know more about this organization. But anytime that Clea has asked Wong about it or even shown him her latest findings, Wong finds himself having very vague recollections and really no memory of any detail that he could share that comes to be of any help. And through the course of this series, this has shown Wong that someone has blocked this information out of his memory. And from here, this is what takes us to following Wong, who at this point has left Clea in order to go out and find some answers. But also with doing this, he's accompanied by Bats, because Bats tells Wong that he never takes him anywhere. So this is Wong taking Bats everywhere. But for Wong at this time, as he leaves to go and find these answers, he makes his way to Chinatown, New York, but also while heading there, it's a quiet walk between him and Bats, because Wong finds himself thinking about his name, which was his father's name, and his father before him, and how from a child Wong was told by his father that there is no greater failure for you than to outlive your Sorcerer Supreme. They are everything, and you, we, are nothing. And really, the reason why Wong is thinking about all of this, for starters, it's obvious because Dr. Stephen Strange is dead. But in addition to this, Wong finds himself out here looking for answers because he doesn't want the same fate to meet Clea Strange, who now is the current Sorcerer Supreme of Earth. So now he has to find these answers and let nothing get in his way. But while Wong is out, we find him making his way to the bar with no doors. And with doing so, he comes across flickering Jenny who not only is the bartender here, but years ago she had been cursed by a witch who had caused Jenny to always have a constantly changing appearance, which as you could imagine, has made it hard for Jenny to get just a regular job out there. But it's here where we find that Wong has made his way to flickering Jenny to ask her about the blasphemy cartel and any information that she may have heard, either directly or in passing, or if they've even tried to attack the bar with no doors. But Jenny quickly lets Wong know that an organization like that, they wouldn't dare try to attack the bar with no doors because they would be crazy to, with this place entertaining the likes of Agatha Harkness, Count Chaos, and the Scarlet Witch. So if anything, this is the last place that those guys would attack. So for Wong, after this, he then reaches out to Black Widow, who tells him to meet her alone. So Wong is then like, okay, sure. But then he's like, oh, I got bats with me. But Romanoff really doesn't mind, because lucky for Wong, she's a dog person. But with Wong asking Black Widow to meet with him, he reached out to her because Wong thinks that if no one else, Widow is the one person who knows everything about modern military and espionage operations. But unfortunately, from Wong's description, Widow's not able to identify who the Blasphemy Cartel is, but instead she's only really able to tell him who they're not, which of course isn't too helpful because this still has Wong looking for a needle in a haystack as far as identifying who these guys are and who's in their corner. But with him sharing with Widow what he does know, as far as the Blasphemy Cartel making moves for control in the occult underground, Widow lets him know that it makes sense. With these guys going after a group of people who are ungoverned or more or less undergoverned, that it makes sense that the Blasphemy Cartel is going to bring war to these competitive control areas. And since these people don't have a specific leader or government, of course they're going to look to the Sorcerer Supreme. But with Widow leaving, she more or less just lets Wong know that he's got to find where these people are. Because with the Sorcerer Supreme being thrown into this war, him and Clea are in a bad position with the Blasphemy Cartel knowing their address while Wong and Clea no longer know any of theirs. But for Wong, after this conversation with Widow, he then finds himself being approached by the Lost Boys, who tell Wong that they don't appreciate him out here asking all these questions. And for that reason, they end up trying to jump Wong. But to their surprise, seven against one put them at a disadvantage. But also with these guys jumping Wong, he didn't bother to use any magic. But instead, he actually took this opportunity to blow off some steam. And really, one of the things for Wong is like, though he can fight, he doesn't want to go around just beating people up because he doesn't want the world to see him in that way. But if the situation calls for it, he's ready to defend himself. But at this point for Wong, after having his conversation with Widow, him and Bats then make their way to the X-Men's treehouse because Wong has reached out to Jean Grey to see if she would help him recover these lost memories. And in response, Jean told Wong that she'd help. And with Wong going to see Jean, she's glad to do whatever she can because in times past, Doctor Strange has helped the X-Men as well. So for Jean, she sees this opportunity to help Wong as the least she can do. 
and as she gets started, she lets Wong know that fighting spells of amnesia, they're not necessarily her area of expertise, but nonetheless, she's going to help and do as much as she can. And she warns Wong that this could be a bit uncomfortable. But from here, with Jean going into Wong's mind, she lets him know that she's not going to judge him for whatever she sees. And when Jean said that, for whatever reason, it made me chuckle while reading this issue. But with Jean going into Wong's mind, it made him think of his father, which we had seen Wong thinking about not too long ago, as far as Wong's father instilling in him the duties that he would have in servitude to the Sorcerer Supreme. But in addition to that, Jean sees a number of Wong's other memories, like him initially meeting Doctor Strange, as well as a younger Wong in training, and Jean lets Wong know that his memories are extremely turbulent. But nonetheless, she digs deeper in order to find what's being hidden which again for Wong is a very painful process. But nonetheless, he tells Jean to keep going because Wong sees even this grueling and painful moment, or better yet the process of recovery in this moment and the pain that he's enduring to find these memories as a moment of him facing his demons, but also an opportunity for him to serve the Sorcerer Supreme. Because again, with him doing this, ultimately it's for the protection of Clea. But then it's here where we find that eventually, Wong and Jean break through. The spell is broken and Wong's memory has returned. And he lets Jean know that regardless of how she feels, he's in her debt. And if the X-Men or Krakoa have anything that they need, all they need to do is just ask. But after this, Wong and Bats then make their way back to the bar with no doors. And when they get there, Wong approaches flickering Jenny and he gives her a piece of Mysterium, of which he was given from Jean, that recently has become the new currency of the Sol system. But the special thing about Mysterium is that it's a unique metal with anti-magical properties. So when Wong gets back to the bar with no doors and he sees Jenny leaving, he gives her this coin calling it a tip. And when she catches it, he tells her what it is and he lets her know that it's enough to break the glamour of concealment. And right away, it's here where we find that this is actually Pandora Peters, the director of Wand. And right away, Wong demands that she tells him why he couldn't remember her or S.H.I.E.L.D.'s entire wizard, alchemy, necromancy department. And he wants to know why she's hiding at the bar with no doors, but also why is the blasphemy cartel using Wand equipment and tactics? And right away, when he says this, she knows that he hasn't figured it all out yet because much like how after the Soviet Union had fell and the KGB became gangsters, the same thing happened with S.H.I.E.L.D. fell because the Blasphemy Cartel, they are wand and they want director Pandora Peters dead too. And man, it's crazy because as if S.W.O.R.D. and S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't have enough of a crazy history, now we find that wand has become the Blasphemy Cartel. And so now real quick, I'm gonna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again in the next one. All right, later.